Okay, so um, you know what we have is we have a permutation problem here. It's given to us right in the question that it is looking for the number of permutations. Okay, we're gonna do a bunch of problems real quick right here. Uh, you know, maybe we'll do five or six problems, something like that, that will just help us make sure that we're using our formulas correctly. But this one really here tells us the permutation. So. When we look at our, uh, zoom out here just a minute, we look at our table and we say, well, which formula are we gonna use for this table? It's telling us it's a permutation. It's telling us it's one of these two formulas here, either n to the r or n factorial over n minus r factorial. So the only question is, which is it gonna be? Are we gonna be allowed to use repetition or is repetition not allowed? So it says the three different digits here. So that would mean I can't select 0, 0, 0 as a selection. That would be repetition. They would not be different. They'd be three of the same digits. So this is telling me when it says the word different, it's saying you have to avoid repetition. No repetition. So now the question is we have to pick three digits out of the 10 digits that exist. So in this case, we would define n as the number of digits we get to pick from is 10 and r we're going to pick three of them okay so n is 10 and r is 3 and the formula we're going to use repetition not allowed for this permutation so n is 10 so we would put 10 factorial here and then in parentheses r was 3 so we put 10 minus 3 factorial down beneath and you know really if you think about this problem the problem is simply we pick for the first number we have any of number 10 different choices times now that we've used that number since we can't repeat it we can only multiply by nine different choices and then once we pick that second there are only eight digits left for the third so this is really what it works out to and if we put 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 factorial we end up with 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, over 10 minus 3 is 7 factorial, so 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So these guys cancel, right? And we end up with 10 times 9 times 8. So it does it for us. We can just use the formula, though. Repetition not allowed. It's a permutation repetition not allowed and we just put it in like this 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 factorial and hit enter there's our answer it's 720 now another way to do that is to use if you're using your calculator here you can use for this box right here in your menu for this formula you can use the permutations command so the way you do that is you go menu we go to probability we select permutations so it says all right permutations n permutations of r so that means we're going to put in 10 comma 3 that is from n is 10 and r is 3 we're picking 3 from out of 10 and we put our answer in and we get the same answer so it remembers the formula for us as long as repetition is not allowed and we know it's a permutation we just use that formula or that, that thing on the page all right, let's go to the next question here. Now it tells me again, it's permutations. We have four different letters chosen from the 26. So this is a 26, 10, N is 26, and R is four. So that's pretty simple. I just use my calculator, bring that down. I highlight and bring this down, and I change it. I'm choosing from 26 letters, and I'm gonna pick four of them, and it told me it's looking for permutations and it doesn't want to allow repetition so it's pretty straightforward if I just plug it in I get 358,800 358,800 now it says how many different committees of five people can be chosen chosen from ten people so now this is the first one is not telling us it's a permutation we have to think about it if I've got five different people that are going on the committee it doesn't say like one is the committee chair and two is you know somebody else it's just five people so it doesn't really matter the order I pick them for you know if I picked uh, person A before I picked person B 
But both A and B are going to end up on the committee, so it doesn't matter if I picked A first or B or B first or A. The order I pick in, I'm picking from doesn't matter. So this is a combination. But can I repeat it? Can I just pick the same person five times to fill all five spots? No, that wouldn't be a committee. So there's no repetitions. It's a combination problem. So combination, no repetition is going to be, here's combination, no repetition. So we would put the number of people we're picking from over the number of people picked, factorial times, you know, the number of people picking from minus the number of people picked factorial. So, you know, it would look down here like this. Using that formula, we would put 10, 10 factorial on top over 5 factorial times 10 minus 5 factorial. And what we're going to end up with is 10 times 9 times 8, 7, dot, 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 all the way to 1. Over 5, dot, 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 all the way to 1. That's this part right here. This will be 5 factorial. And those guys will cancel. So this will just end up to be 10, 9, 8, 7, and 6 from the top because the 5s are going to cancel with this. Over, and then I still have this part here. So it's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's what it's going to work out to. Anyway, I also know that if as long as I'm not doing repetition is not allowed, I can just use my calculator for this. I can either enter it like that and let the calculator do the work, or I can just go, give me a, ready, it is a probability problem and it is a combination. And now with the combination, it says how many number and how many are you picking? I've got 10 and I'm picking 5. I get 252 different combinations of picking those five people from those 10 that are eligible. And now I can also do it, you know, using this formula that we have. So the formula says, sorry, it should be 10 factorial over 5 factorial times 10 minus 5 factorial. And I still get 252. So I'm not going to keep doing that, you know, that way. I'm just going to, you know, um, I'm just going to calculate them. So here we go. Jones is the chairman of a committee. And how many ways can a committee of five be chosen from ten people that Jones must be one of them? Now, this is kind of a good question. It looks exactly like the last one. But the difference is Jones must be on the committee. So we're not really going to pick five people because one of them's already chosen, and it's Jones, right? We need four more committee members. So we need four more, and then there's not ten people because Jones is one of them, so it's really four out of nine. So we would do it just like we did before, only now there's really only nine people, and we're going to pick four of them. When we hit enter, there's 126 ways. Right? Jones is already chosen, so we need to choose another four. Okay, let's do some Khan Academy work. So this is an exercise called combinations. It's really simple combination problem. So if I use my calculator, I see I have eight, and he's going to pick three. I can't pick the same one three times, so I'm going to pick three different tigers to take out of eight. So really, that's just a combination problem, right? And I'm going to take, and I might just zoom in now. Here we go. I'm going to just take from the 8, I'm picking 3. And I get 56. Next one. Ben has five unique socks, but only fits three. Well, that's pretty simple because I'm, I understand now that I understand combinations, I understand that picking socks and for a bag, it doesn't really matter what order I pick them in. It's just that I'm going to pick three of them. So I know it's a combination problem. I know the formula for it. I know how to use the calculator for it. It's quite simple. There are 10 different ways. Okay? Six and three. So we'll do that too. I almost feel like I'm wasting your time, except for that I know I can do this so fast, and I get 20. So that's how you'll do that simple, simple exercise. Once you understand combinations, permutations, that is a simple exercise. 
let's try doing the permutations problems. Okay, in this case, we have four reindeer. You want three to fly your sled, and they must be in a single file line. So we're talking about different ways you can arrange your reindeer. So it's a permutation. You're picking three out of four, and order does matter. So we would really going to use our menu to go to probability and take the permutations and say of the four, comma, how many permutations for three of them are there? The answer is 24. Now we have five reindeer. We want three. Very simple stuff here. So we're going to go in there and just change that from four to five. And now we're up to 60 permutations. And then the next one, five, and you want four. So now we're going to go here. Five and we're picking four to permutations, 120. And we've got four and we're picking three. Well, shoot, we've already got that one. Permutations four, we picked three, that was 24. And now we got five and we want three, and we did that here, that was 60. So that's how you'll do the permutations problems, okay? Not overwhelmingly difficult, I hope. I hope you look at those and say, oh, I can do those. Piece of cake. But they are going to start to get a little bit harder. So I'll work through a couple of these with you. You're going to be doing permutations and combinations. And this one talks about overcounting. And um, actually, we, since we're going to talk about overcounting in here, I've grabbed a bunch of hints for you here. It kind of talks about... How many different ways are there to arrange the letters in the word sassy? Well, you have five letters, and arranging them indicates that there are permutations. Okay, so if you're going to have a permutation of five of these just same five letters, five letters long, you can see the logic they built in here. The first blank, you're going to have any one of those five you could put in there. Then you have four, then you have three two and one so quite simply you could know that the number of choices is five factorial five times four times three times two times one those are the total number of choices but recognize something that the s's right and here we use color and that's really nice if i put the pink s first and then the yellow s and the blue s that would seem to be a different method because you know, the first letter was S, and the second was S, and the third letter was S. But now that I mix up that order, it turns out, when I mix up that order, that now I actually have six different problems, or six different ordered letters that really only have one permutation. So we've, that means, what it says here is we've overcounted by three factorial. Now, what we have to do, what that means is, we think about how many ways could we permute or, or make permutations with just these three objects. And that would be three factorial. So we have to divide by three factorial. So we end up with 120 divided by three factorial, which is six. And that gives us 20. And so that's how those guys are done right there. Now, we have a permutation and we've got Jebediah, Quentin, Rudy, Gloopin, and Bloopin in a single file line. So let's let's see how that would work. You know, if you did Jebediah for your first, well, for your first, right, let's see, um, sorry. You're going to have one, two, three, four, five. You have five choices again. Four and five, right? So we have five choices again. So now you would remember that we'd use that logic like we used before. Five factorial will give me my total number of choices. However, Q and B are going to be next to each other. They have to be next to each other. Okay, sorry about that. I got a, uh, couldn't, couldn't finish there real quick. Um, got an interruption. So basically, we're trying to figure out how many ways to arrange, and you'd think we have five factorial, but, but what we're saying is that these two go together. So that eliminates a choice. As soon as I pick one, I must pick the other, right? 
So really, instead of thinking of having five you know, different choices, it's going to eliminate one of these choices. Let me get rid of that choice right there. So what it really gives us, let me get to a little bit of a thinner line here, is it gives us four choices, right? It gives us four choices. So our answer is four factorial. But wait a minute. Quentin and Blupin, if I went Q and then B, that would give me, you know, two choices for Quentin and Blupin. So really, I could go though, I'm sorry, that's just one choice, Quentin and then Blupin. But I could go the other direction, Blupin and then Quentin. So, uh, you know, they have to just be next to each other, but it doesn't matter which order. So when I talk about these guys being next to each other, I have to remember to double the number of ways I can put these guys next to each other. So I'm going to times that by 2. So this would be 4 factorial times 2. 4 factorial, 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 1, so that's 24, times 2 is 48. <coughs> Sorry, sneezing again. 48 would be my answer. So you see how that's done. Hold on just a Okay, I'm so sorry. I just, uh, I've been sneezing here and I had to, I just had to pause the video for a second. Okay, we're back and we're going to do some word problems. And we're actually what we're using is we're using permutations and combinations to come up with probabilities. So to figure out the number in the, in the space, right? So it says there are nine students in a class three boys and six girls. Okay, so now the question is, what is the probability that everyone in the group is a girl? This is kind of a tricky problem. So first of all, let's just see how many total um, prob or total permutations that there, we could come up with, right? Or total combinations. We're gonna, you gotta first think about is this a combination or permutation? Well, they're just picking a group of four at random. There's no order necessarily. So we just thinking about that, you know, how many out of the nine she's going to pick four. So it's a combination problem to begin with. So here we go. The number, escape, sorry, the number of combinations, sorry, we go to probability. We want the number of combinations from nine kids. How many different ways can she pick four? So there's 126 different combinations of kids that she can come up with. So on my little table here, I know my probability is out of 126, right? But what I'm asking for is the probability that everyone in the group is a girl. So this is A. The event would be that everyone in the group is a girl. So now the question is, how many different ways can I select four girls out of the six? So it's another combination problem. And in in, in, so to determine the number in A, right? So to, to calculate the probability, we do the number of elements in the set A over the number of elements in the space. The number of elements in the space was 126. So what was the number of elements in the set A? Well. We're trying to figure out how many different ways they can pull four girls from out of those six that exist. So that is, again, a combination problem. So we're going to say out of the six girls, how many different ways can I pull four of them? There's really only 15 ways. So then my probability of A, event A, there are 15 combinations that involve only girls out of the 126, right? So that would be my answer. Let's just see if I can reduce that at all. 15 divided by 126, and it does reduce. It's 5 over 42. So let's put in 5 over 42, and we'll cross our fingers here. There we go. So now we have another problem just like it. And, and we're going to have 10 students in the class, 3 and 7. So the, the probability, again, we're talking about the probability. So the number in this event, event A, over the number in the space. So we're just thinking about how many kids are in the space, and we're picking four at random. And it's for a group that's picked at random. So we would say, you know, just like we did here, we could say how many different ways can we pick 
four kids from 10. So n is 10, that's how many we're picking from, and then we want four. There are 210 ways, 210 different combinations in the space. But how many combinations are there of just girls? So if I was just picking out of the girls, I would say how many combinations out of the girls. Now, I'm using this here. You could be using this formula here. It's combinations without repetitions. You could use that formula. You can put this in your regular blue calculator, any calculator, or you can hand calculate it even. I'm just kind of taking shortcuts because I'm trying to show you as many of these problems I can solve at a time. There are 35 different ways. So my answer is going to be 35 different ways out of 210. And just to make sure that that can't be re reduced, I'm going to put 35 over 210 to help me, and it is 1 over 6. So that helps me get a good answer and be quick. So now we're just going to continue to do these, and you can see it's pretty much going to be the same problem straight through. right? How many different ways can I get for those 10 kids, right? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How many number are in the space? And we're thinking about groups of four that can select it from all 10. And then up here, how many that are just girls, right? So that's groups of four you can make out of eight. Okay, and we'll try that one more time. I, can, I guess I can do uh, just do this and see the next problem to see whether or not there's any difference. So we have 10, we're picking four, and then we're going to do eight of the four. So there's 70 over 110, right? You can see it here, there's 70 over 110. That's the number of groups of four I can make out of just girls divided by the number of groups of four I can make out of all the kids. And 70 divided by 110 I know is 1 third. So 1 third. So anyway, um, sorry about that. But then this is, this is really what I'm going to do with you right now is I'm just going to only take you to that point um, because I've already gone so long in these lessons. But really know that you've, you've learned a lot and you've got a lot that got done. And if you need help, I'd be happy to help you.